Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia photographer. And today, we're in Chattanooga, Tennessee, reviewing the 55 millimeter F2.8 micro Nikkor AIS lens. For a general purpose walk around lens, I think it makes a really good choice because it is a macro lens, so you can get detailed photos as well as just kind of general photography. You know, it doesn't have zoom, of course, so you can't get a lot of distance out of it, but it does have a really good range of uses. You know, if you're just going to have a camera with you and take snapshots or photos while you're walking around, kind of like I'm doing right now, it's great for that. I've been shooting with this little 55 millimeter F 2.8, and I'll be honest with you, it's very similar to my 3.5. They're even similar in size like shockingly similar size it's almost the same size the the lens does give you what two-thirds of a stop more light and as far as close focus and all that it's it's very similar really nice it works really well found a really interesting old building I'm gonna get a photo of but here's the problem down here on the sidewalk I'm too close with the 55 mil I really don't want to change lenses I brought the 20 but I don't want to use it I want to use the 55 now here's the building it's the title guarantee and trust company 1925 that's a beautiful building so what I'm gonna do is get up here in the yard of the courthouse and that would allow, allow me to back up some more but i had to move a parking cone out from in front of it first so i could get it out of the frame because as you can see in this test photo it looks goofy with that yellow cone right in the middle of the picture its aperture ring is just like any other ais lens it's well made got good texturing just like all the other ones it's f28 to f32 and whole stop increments all right here's my building See if I can get a decent handheld photo of it now. Nope, still too close. I might have to back up some more. All right, everybody. Hello. Phil, Phil has his X-T3 out. Look at my. I'm slumming. I'm using the Z6. <laughs> look, and look what Heather's decided. We're to, all to using go. different stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Heather usually shoots with the D7100. She's got my Z50 today. <laughs> Heather's an, uh, you're not Heather. What's your name? Oh, David. I'm that guy that lives across town. <laughs> That's rock hopping Argus David Sailors, Georgia photographer, vintage lens genius. He usually uses an X-T3 silver topped, mm -hmm. unlike my black topped. Mm -hmm. But today he's using his completely awesome Nikon, as they say mm -hmm. down under, Z6. And what lens is this? You told me it's a 55 2.8? Yeah, this is the micro Nikkor 55 millimeter F2.8. Micro? It does macro? Oh yeah. Look, it focuses down to some kind of ridiculously. It, it's, <laughs> it focuses so far it'll, you'll dislocate your wrist. It actually focuses to less than 10 inches, 9.86 oh, wow. inches. Yeah. That is and that that's right? from the film plane, which is right uh, somewhere around here. It's marked. So it's probably in the camera somewhere. It's right there. Yeah. That little symbol is the film plane. Isn't that so. cool how close to the front of the camera the film plane is on these mirrorless cameras? Yeah. yeah. So you got, so it's a, it'll focus to about that far. That is, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And this is Grant Govro's lens. He came up and we went shooting and he left it with me so I could review it. Because I have the 3.5 version and he has the 2.8 version. I'm seeing if there's really that much of a difference in them. Holy cow, Grant's cool. Yeah. yeah. 
I got to mail it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get to keep it. I'm but. sure it'll get lost in the mail. I wouldn't uh -huh. worry about it, Grant. That thing will be here sometime at the end of the century. <laughs> Maybe. It's in 2099. That's awesome. All right. Let's see if I can get some decent street photos with it. Well, there's one thing I have learned about this lens and that is it's excellent for portraiture. I've made a number of portraits today with it and all of them have turned out phenomenal. This lens is just incredible. It, it, if it wasn't for the super long focus though, it would be the, almost the perfect walk around lens. But it takes for nearly a full revolution to manufacture focus from minimum to maximum. Only likes maybe five degrees. It's close to a full rev. And because of that, it's really slow to focus. And that's the only thing that I have found that I don't like about it. So we've gotten down here on uh, whatever this street is. It's a side street. I don't remember the name of it, unfortunately, but we're like one block down from Market, whatever the name of this road is. But there's a Tesla parked right here. And this Tesla has been worked over I don't know what happened, who they made mad or what, but it's got paint on it and it looks like the wind is knocked out of it. It's lived hard. So it's, it, we'd like to know the story behind said Tesla. It'd be interesting to know. I just spent the day with Phil and Heather shooting some street photography out on Main Street area, Market Street, Main Street, Chattanooga Choo Choo. And I used the same lens all day today. These photos turned out really good. Matter of fact, the gentleman up on the uh, up on the deck with the mask under his chin and the gentleman with the hat both want me to send them portraits they like their photos so well this lens is exquisite it just it's just hard to describe i'll be looking for one for me to add to my collection i need to show you guys my collection of lenses as they sit right now i have more than i realize to get one here and there and it starts to, they start to pile up back to the video in progress if you have a nikon dslr that has the aperture feeler on it. This lens will communicate the aperture data to the, to the camera. So if you go into the non-CPU lens data on like a D810 or a D7000 or um, D500, any of those Nikon DSLRs and enter the maximum aperture of the lens and the focal length, you know, 55 millimeters and F2.8. And then when you put the lens on the camera, as you operate the aperture, the camera detects that change in aperture and it knows what it's actually set to and it'll record that exit data. You still manually focus and manually control the aperture, but the camera will record that exit data accurately. Now in the Z6, it doesn't have that aperture feeler, so it doesn't record the actual exit data. It'll just record it as either F1.0 or F2.8 or whatever the base value you put in non-CPU lens data is. I'll find out when I get home and pull the photos out, but it's, uh, that was loud. Probably copyrighted. But either way, I'm gonna get across the road. Oh no, I don't have slow-mo going, so I can't do the, the Casey slow-mo trick. <laughs> but 
anyway this is a phenomenal little lens if you can get one for reasonable money i recommend you get one for just a general purpose walk around lens this one the 55 f 3.5 ais the 60 millimeter micro nickor all of those make excellent general purpose lenses you you can't go wrong with any of them uh, i ran a 60 millimeter on a couple of my trips as my just general purpose photography lens on my d810 and loved it done amazingly well for me this is david the georgia photographer and if you haven't done it yet right down there is the subscribe button and the like button if you like my review you know this is just a real world review kind of thing and you know if you enjoy the videos at large notification bells down there and all that sort of jazz but until next time get your camera out and go take a picture with it all right we'll see you later bye bye